At the end of the Second World War, the world was divided into two spheres. The capitalist Western world, led by the United States, and the communist Eastern world, led by the Soviet Union. And the ideological conflict between the two had been temporarily put aside for the sake of defeating the Nazis. The relations collapsed almost as soon as the war was over. As both sides wanted to rebuild the world in their own image. And the competition between the two spilled over into all areas of life. The economics, political, military, of course, scientific. In the 1960s, this competition had morphed into what has become known as the space race, where both the Soviet Union and the United States attempted to land on the moon in order to cement their scientific dominance and secure a future in space. Now, the quest for space exploration sounds like a noble undertaking that all of humankind could benefit from, sure, but you might be surprised to know that the origins of the space race could be found in the rapid development of weapons of war. During the Second World War, attempts were made by all sides to develop self-guided missiles. This eventually morphed into finding ways to guide atomic weapons, and once the Soviets had nukes as well, the race was on. The explosion, pun intended, of missile and rocket technology after the war soon brought hidden benefits. Now, the missile systems could be used not just to carry weapons of war, but to put man-made objects into space to orbit around our planet. Now, to be the very first to do so would bring scientific glory to the nation that could pull it off, and both the US and the Soviet Union were keen to snatch the victory, so the space race was afoot. Now, out of the gate, the Soviet Union won early success. One of their earliest converted missile platforms was the R-7 Semyorka, which was the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile. Now, this thing was an absolute beast, 37 meters or 121 feet tall, and coming in at 280 tons. It was such an influential piece of technology for the Soviets that it launched its own family of rockets, and some are still in use to this day. It could carry a five megaton nuclear warhead some 8,800 kilometers or 5,500 miles. But with a little modification, the Soviets realized that it could carry a very different payload straight up and into space. In 1957, the Soviet Union succeeded in what would be humanity's first step among the stars and would usher in the dawn of a new era. A modified R-7 rocket was loaded with a small chrome ball and blasted off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. That wasn't just any old chrome ball though, it was the first satellite, Sputnik 1, and its launch created a sensation back here on Earth. Although some aspects of the launch failed, the satellite was able to successfully enter low Earth orbit and stayed in space for over three weeks. Now the point of Sputnik was to prove that the technology existed to place a satellite in orbit to test the conditions in the atmosphere and to test radio communication and tracking to a man-made object up in the sky. Now the satellite could be seen traversing the sky all across the world and anybody with a radio could tune in and listen to the beep beep that it was sending back to Earth. The launch of Sputnik put a panic amongst the American government and population because it was apparent that the Soviet Union was pulling ahead in technological development. And on the day of the launch, an NBC announcer played the broadcast of the satellite's radio signal, calling it the sound that forever separates the old world from the new. Now the space race had truly begun, and the Americans would be scrambling to catch up for almost the next decade.